Hi everybody and welcome to part 2 of the hypertension presentation. Alright, so without saying much, let's get to part 2 about what, how can you be educated in hypertension. So signs and symptoms. What may you be experiencing? So for hypertension, these are common symptoms, but there are more. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, ear ringing. Some people, most people can experience this, but you also have to be aware that hypertension is a silent disease. So you have to be aware of that. Always monitor your blood pressure at least weekly if you if you do have to and see a medical doc uh, see a medical professional who can help you with this if your your numbers are getting too high later stages this is more of the chronic condition it's going to be eye problems hemorrhages chest pain why eye problems because the vessels in the eyes are very weak and hypertension as we talked about in the pathophysiology presentation or part all that pressure that's being pumped by the heart is actually damaging the endothelium so the eyes are the, usually the first places you're going to see some damage being caused by the pressure from all that blood Hemorrhages is just, it just means that you're going to have a ble uh, bleeding leakage from the vessels in the tissue. And then chest pain, it's a common thing that happens with chronic hypertension. Because either the, the heart is getting weak or the pounding of the heart is too strong as well. Differential diagnosis, well this is an easy one. This is an easy one. What else could it be? something called secondary hypertension. So what's the difference between primary hypertension and secondary hypertension is that primary means that you don't have any other diseases that could lead to hypertension or high blood pressure. But secondary means you already have a disease and it's causing high blood pressure. And a common example of this is renal failure or renal disease kidneys. Your kidneys are starting to become affected. Sequelae. What happens if you don't treat hypertension? Well, you're at risk of the following, mostly. Congestive heart failure, right here, the heart, which means that you're not, that your heart is getting weak your heart is literally becoming tired. So it cannot pump the goal that the body needs, the goal blood supply that the body needs anymore. Renal failure is basically the same thing as congestive heart failure, except it's happening in the kidneys. Again, the kidneys are becoming too tired to do the work for you, to keep up the high blood pressure, but the problem with the kidneys is that it takes many years or it takes a long time before you have symptoms of kidney failure. And when you have symptoms of kidney failure, failure it's usually too late. And the last thing is stroke from a hypercoagulable state. In other words, clots, kind of like we talked about in the previous presentation. And those strokes can usually happen right here in the brain. So those are the risks that you have if you're not treating your hypertension well from a professional. So workout. What if you do go and see a doctor? So first, to diagnose you with hypertension, you need to have at least 3, 100 over 80, 90, I'm sorry, one. 40 over 90, let me correct that, or higher number for three separate doctor visits, it's a standard to diagnose hypertension. 
there are other ways. There are um, sometimes your numbers can be higher and they need less readings to diagnose you with hypertension, but this is like the standard for now. Uh, there's a fundoscopy, something called fundoscopy, which is this image right here. Here the doctor is putting this device called fundoscopy and look inside of your eye. And the eye vessels will show up and show what damage is there or just to check your eyes if they're healthy. And then the other thing is your analysis. And this is going to check for the for the kidneys if there's any damage for the kidneys so it's basically you put you pee in a cup there's a slip a urinalysis slip that shows the different values and proteins and other things that are going to measure the from the urine and of course the medical professional or the lab technician is going to use gloves for that unlike the other person in the hemorrhoids presentation who didn't use gloves for the rectal exam. So that's all I, what I have for part two of the clinical aspect of hypertension. Stick around for part three, that way I can show you about the treatment methods from a conventional perspective, naturopathic perspective, and the mind-body way as well. Alright, so please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next presentation.